Ladies and gentlemen, have any of you ever sat there and wondered, why do I play chess? Sure, I played this game in my childhood, maybe. Maybe I got into it more during the pandemic or the last couple of years, but this game is absolutely brutal, and as much as I study, I feel like I know absolutely nothing about it. Well, the purpose of today's video is to appease all of those emotions. You are about to witness one of the best games you have ever seen in your life. It was sent to me by an individual in my Discord, and normally when you all send me games, like 90% of them are really not that entertaining. You think they're entertaining, they're not really that entertaining. This game, oh my. This was like going to see a movie in IMAX. This was like going to see some 3D exhibit. This was like watching two majestic animals prance around the safari. This was spectacular. This game will make you never question again why you play chess. Because it because there's individuals like this out there who will make it all worth the while. Now, uh, this is a battle between two 600 rated players. Some of you watching are below 600, around 600, above 600. But you can appreciate a nice, good old-fashioned scrap. You ever walk through the downtown of the city that you live in? You ever watch two drunk individuals fight? Oh, well, this is just about that. Our players are chips from the Philippines and person from the entire world. Person doesn't have... Uh, a flag. They're just international. All right, the game begins with c4, which is already good news because if a 600 is playing the English opening, this is like somebody trying to play a, a, a very famous like strings piece on a cello and they only know how to play the flute. e5, good move, but now d4. Okay, so already not good news because white has the queen out on move three. This cannot possibly go any, like, any worse, right? We're not supposed to do this, right? This is not the way I recommend that we play chess. All right, you got to develop your knights. Your queen really should not be coming out this early. What does black play? Black attacks the queen. Black is a principled individual. The reason why the engine hates that move is because the queen can just go back, and now that square is, is very weak. So this move creates a possibility of an outpost on the enemy side of the board. Pawn moves in chess intend to create... A barrier, take space, and control squares. It would have been much better for black to simply develop the knight. But white gives a check because I see check, I must give a check. Black plays bishop e7, and now white is winning, and obviously I don't know anything about chess. Black should have blocked this check with a queen or with a knight. There are three ways to get out of a check. Move the king, take the checker, or block. In this case, you cannot run, you have to block. And blocking with the knight or the queen is better because when you go here, suddenly the move queen takes g7 is possible. Of course, white does not play queen takes g7. However, if I were to give you 10 guesses to guess the move that white played here, you would legitimately never guess it in your life because it doesn't make any sense. You, it just wouldn't. Now, we could count all the legal moves that white has. White has four legal moves with these pawns. White has four legal moves with each of these pawns. All right, so it's six times four, 24. You got a lot of bishop moves. White has like over 30 legal moves here, maybe 40. White plays the move h4. Why? I don't know. Now, black at this point realizes that the pawn is hanging and plays knight f6. No, black plays knight c6, which on its own is really not that bad of a move. Of course, the idea is attacking the queen. However, anytime you create an attack, and this is in my video, Seven Most Common Chess Mistakes. You attack a piece, you don't even think about where it's going to go. Watch that video. White goes here. So now white is losing because white is just making a bunch of queen moves and black can just win development time on white. Right? And then play d5 and get all the pieces out. But black doesn't do that, right? Black doesn't play the move knight f6. Black plays d6. Do I hate this move? No, because obviously the idea of d6 is to develop a bishop. Now it's time for white to get the other pieces in the game. Knight c3 is probably the best move that white has played since move one. And now black uh, utilizes the entire purpose of the move d6 to develop the light squared bishop by playing the move f5. Okay, that's not really the same thing, but you are defending it. All right, so now the queen's going to move one more time. And again, walks directly into the move knight f6. But even in a more savage way, there is a move here for black, which is so... Uh, knight d4. The move knight d4 does three things. It threatens knight c2 check. It blocks the queen from getting back to d1. And it blocks the f3 square. And with these three threats in mind, if white covers this, knight f6 traps the queen, which is why you don't make five queen moves in the first eight moves. It, and then it's just going to get locked out there. It's not good. All right, you're gonna get bear trapped in the middle of the woods. No, no, but instead of that, black takes the free pawn. And listen, I can't blame black. 
okay? That really is a free pawn. That's a free pawn. Now, it's not a good move because now you give white back the time of the position and you open up the H file. H pawns and like B and G pawns, they could be poison pawns because you actually give more benefit to your opponent when you take them. But knight B5. All right, that is a very logical move. Uh, I really wish white would be developing more pieces, but fine, knight B5, I can't hate it. Knight D6 is a threat. Uh, I would recommend going bishop to E7 back. Black plays a move here that I, 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 I mean, I simply, like if you offered me a large sum of money, I would not even be able to fake an explanation for you. Black plays rook B8. I don't understand this move. Like, is the idea to prevent a fork? Was that the idea? Like, knight, I, I don't, why did you go rook b8? Like, that's not even addressing the, pro okay. Anyway, knight takes d6 check, and now white is completely winning. White is completely winning here because it's, it's going to be forced mate soon. Like, white should play queen f7. And even though that hangs this, there is bishop f4. And now the only legal move is knight e5, and now you just see a king and a queen on the same line. So, rook d1. Or long castles. And that's it. You're just going to win a queen. You're going to win a queen. You're going to win a knight. You're going to win this. But you do have to be a little bit careful here. If you take the queen straight up, your queen is hanging. So the best move here, take the knight. Now black just can't deal with all the problems. Rook d6. This is hanging. This is, you're going to win the game. I mean, literally everything is hanging in the position. You have to be a little careful. But that is the winning idea. Now, if you don't see that, Worst comes to worst, you take the bishop with check, and then you take this bishop, which is just in your line of sight. Okay, knight takes f5. Losing about 80% of the advantage, because black can take, but you're still doing okay. Queen takes f5. Now, white is still a lot better here, because uh, the king is just, directly in the, is just directly in the middle. Now, your bishop no longer is defended, so it's time to bring the bishop home, right? It's time, we've, all right, bishop f6 is the only move here that makes any sense. So, now... I got, I got a question for my subscriber. Why now? What I mean by that is, why now did you get the brilliant idea to attack the queen with the knight, when literally the entire game, you have been avoiding attacking the queen with the knight? The whole game! The whole game you could have done this! You finally wait for the most inconvenient moment, because now all I gotta do is take, and then I'm gonna take, and then I'm gonna play rook d1. Instead of that, white moves the queen again. Folks, I think white has moved that queen at a 13 move seven or eight times. This is absurd chess. This is not what you learn on YouTube, which is why you got to watch more YouTube. King f8. All right, well, there's a bishop right there. Let's take it. No, we're just going to give another check. Stop giving checks as if you are being paid per check. No one's paying you per check. And you got to stop always moving the king when you're in check. The bishop can block. Why is this bishop here? Oh, my God. Why is the bishop there? This bishop's just going to pair. Moves the queen again. I just, I, 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 what? It's, I'm telling you, it's like white is being paid to make queen moves. That's really what it feels like. It feels like white's being paid per queen move. Okay. Best move for black here is knight d4. I don't know if black's going to play that. No, black now gets the brilliant idea, again, to play knight g4. I don't hate this move. I like the idea that it's here and here. White goes, ooh, free pawn and check. Are you kidding me? Free pawn and check. Of course, I'm going to take. King f7. And now, uh, again, queen h5 wins everything. you got to always look for checks. But white sees that there's a little pressure on f2. So plays knight h3. I don't dislike this move at all. I know it's better for black, but it's only better for black if black plays rook hd8, which is a very weird move. Like, black is only better if black now cuts the king off on the... It's not, it's not a move that's going to get played. So, white has now successfully defended against f2, right? So, like, king, knight, bishop, defend on that square. Sorry, king, knight, queen, all defend. If any time you're looking at something and you have three attackers and they have three defenders, you're going to lose that trade or capture or something. So, it's better to not get involved. Uh, so, black obviously sees that the move knight h3 defends f2 and plays knight takes f2, just losing a piece for absolutely no reason. Uh, white now, you know, considering that white has just played the move knight h3 defending f2, right? White, of course, recaptures on f2, except white doesn't do that and goes bishop... Like, I'm giving white props for defending themselves, and then they don't even... It, th this is like... Installing a front door on your house, but driving the car through the like the, the sidewall to get in. Like I, I why? 
So the reason why this is minus like a million is not because of this or this. It's because anywhere the knight moves, it's check on the king. So the knight goes anywhere and the king on e1 is in check. And the best thing to do here is actually to take the knight. And the whole point here is you now threaten this as well. If bishop takes h4, queen takes h4 is devastating. The king gets hunted out to the d file, the queen, the knight, everybody gets involved. It, black is completely winning. If you don't see knight takes h3, you can still play knight takes h1, which is just a free rook. That's just an accidental check. But of course, these are 600s. This is the most pressing issue in the position now. Black sees that the queen is under attack. Black decides not to give double check or any of these checks. Black goes queen takes b2. All of the advantage is now gone because you took your eye off the ball. Now, queen takes b2 does look like a good move because a rook is hanging. This can take, this can take, this can take. There's a lot of chaos here. The reason this is back to zeros is because in chess, the two most important things are material and king safety. And once you get to a level where you not only look at your own threats, but how your opponent can get to you, you're going to realize that there is no protection for your king here. The king is just woke up naked in the forest. All right. Had way too much to drink. Kids like he drank a lot of water and then he tripped. Uh, but yeah, he had too much to drink. He's just like he needs some protection here. Right. So white should play queen d5. White should play queen f5. White does play queen f5. That is the best move that white has played. King goes back to e8. And now the queen gets closer. These are the two best moves. That, but again, white is being paid for queen move. So white has now made probably 11 or 12 queen moves. Of course, white is making a lot of money. King goes to f8. And now it's a draw. The best thing that you can do in this position with white is make the draw. Because if you don't make the draw, black is going to destroy you. Black is going to take the rook, take the rook, take the knight, take the bishop. Like, you cannot defend this position. But a lot of people at the low level, they don't know what the best move is. They just try to play the most aggressive thing. They don't... There's no sense of, well, the best I can get right now is a draw, so I should. Nobody knows what's going on when it's 600. So what does white play instead of giving a repetition and taking a draw? White plays the move queen d6. Okay, let me be um, queen d7. Okay, just giving checks. More queen moves. Now black plays knight e7 and throws the game away. Game's over. Why would you do that? Just queen takes knight here. The, game, the game's just lost. You lost a layer of protection. Now if king here, it's made in like three or four. Check somehow, I don't know. Maybe it's not mate right away. Maybe you're just going to lose all your pieces one by one. Yeah, if you go to g6, I think, it's, I, think, I think there might even be a mate with knight f4. Maybe not. Maybe by some miracle, the king survives here for a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's mate in nine, which you're not going to find by fours. But, you know, uh, you'd be all right. Yeah, so of course you're going to take this, right? You're being paid per queen move? No. You hang mate in one. Yeah, you're seeing that correctly. It's m1. It's m1. White goes from zeros to plus 10 to m1. Black to play, made in one. Incredible. Why? The knight and the bishop are right here. It's made. Anywhere the knight moves, the bishop checks the king. So all you have to do is give a second check. The king has no escape. The whole reason there was no mate right now is because the king can go to d1 if the knight moves. You've blocked your escape. Double check and mate, knight d3. If black won the game like this, it would have been the best game of their life. Queen covers the escape, double check. Even though this knight is hanging three different ways and the bishop is hanging one different way, you still win. It's, it's literally mate. Now you have a couple of other mates. You can start with queen c3 or queen b4. <laughs> but we're talking about 600, so black takes the rook! Ah! Now black is still completely winning. This is check, but it's not double check. So of course you should take the bishop. No, takes on d1, and now it's minus 2750! It's minus 63! King and queen are on the same line, so you just gotta pin the rook. You just gotta pin with the rook. Pin the rook to the pin with the rook, queen to king. Queen to king. Now we give a check. We give a check, now the king starts running. Pin, pin, pin. No, no, now the king escapes. Now we take the bishop. The problem with taking the bishop is that when the knight takes the bishop, it's a check. Oh god. Oh, what have we done? Now black has an option between one, two, three, and four moves. Three of the moves lose, one of the moves survives the game. 
75% chance that black will throw the game right now. Black plays the move king f6, throwing the game in one move. White actually finds the best move. And now, instead of running backwards, black really doubles down and throws the game. It is now made in three. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Why is the king out here? Rook h5 is just ladder made in the middle of the board. Rook h5. Two, two, two blocks, take, take, game over. Rook h5 is game over. Instead of that, white plays queen d4. Okay, no problem. King f5, come on. Rook h5, king g4. Oh, anything is mate. Literally anything. Rook g5 is mate. Queen g7 is going to be mate. Knight f6, double check and a move is going to be mate. It's mate. There's so many mates. Let's count how many mates in one are there in this position. Rook h3, queen f4, queen g4, queen h4, queen e5, queen d7. There are so many many mates in one there's literally just a cornucopia vocab word of checkmates in one move white plays knight g3 and hangs the knight but it's still made in one this 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 they're all mate white plays queen takes g7 now the knight blocks and the king runs behind the pawns oh my god Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? This is completely insane. Black is winning again. Why is the king there? How did the king survive that? Can somebody please explain this to me? How did the king survive running 2G1? How? I, I, you could have won that game by accident. You literally could have won that game by just giving... Oh my goodness. Folks, life lesson. When one king is surrounded by seven enemy pieces, give checks as close as possible to the king. Don't give these distant checks. Get close and personal you literally could have won this game by mistake also look at where the king can escape right oh my now we are threatening made in one again so black has to act fast gives a check beautiful move gives another check beautiful move now black is winning black plays the move queen d2 check excellent move except for the fact that it hangs the queen yeah, Black did not see that. Now, luckily for Black, despite losing a full rook, Black is still completely winning because the king can take the bishop. And Black sees that. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, that changes everything. Well, now that's, that's, that's it, right? Rook f5 check. King takes g2. And Black is in the driver's seat and is going to win this game. c5, knight d3 check here. Beautiful move wins the rook because this is pinned. Black doesn't see it. b6. All right. All black has to do here is avoid trading all the pawns. What white should be doing in this position is trading all the pawns. Rook and knight versus rook is a draw. You cannot let... Oh, knight takes... Oh, 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 okay. All right, all right. Nice, check, e3, yup. That c pawn's gonna... What? No, no, you hung your knight. Oh, God. The knight is just hanging. The, just take the knight. Thank you. Now... The last thing here, don't take this pawn. You want to win the pawns like this, but instead of that, white goes here. And that means, folks, that the game is going to end with black promoting like this. And white resigned. White had had enough. And I also have had enough.